In today's video, I want to talk about how to thicken up bonsai trunks in 10 different ways. Okay, so let's talk about how to go from this tiny little skinny Zelkova to this guy in about three to four years. There's several different methods. And it's not by putting this little tree into a bonsai pot. Okay, I know I'm oversimplifying this, but the first thing you want to do about growing a large trunk on your bonsai is keeping the tree healthy. So learn the horticultural side of keeping bonsai and learn about the different species of plants that are used in bonsai so that you know when to cut, when to feed them, when to water them. If you learn all this and keep the tree healthy, they will continue to grow, add foliage to the top, and in return, grow a larger trunk. So if you have an unhealthy tree, it'll be stunted and it won't grow. Seems simple, but that's the number one thing to do first. Keep your tree healthy. Okay, so let's talk about uh, net pots and why, or air pruning pots, and why they're so important. Um, now, in a regular pot like this, the roots do not ramify, they do not um, air prune, and they tend to get root bound and wrap and grow thick and long and wrap around the pot. Um, and in pots like this, what happens, or the net pot, is that the tips of the roots will get air pruned and then it divides and then it multiplies until you get this huge mesh of roots. That mesh of roots are the type of roots called feeder roots. So those feeder roots will actually add to the health of the tree. You can see these feeder roots are here that have died up at the surface. Those feeder roots will add to the health of the tree and uh, let it be able to uptake all the nutrients, minerals, and water that it needs to sustain healthy growth. So this in combination with all the dense foliage that you can grow on the tree will help to thicken up the trunk. This is my Japanese black pine. This right here would be considered a sacrificial trunk. This is another Japanese black pine right here. And this right here would be considered a sacrificial branch. So sacrificial branches and sacrificial trunks do the same exact thing. They increase the girth of the trunk that is supporting those branches. And they actually are not using the final design. And you can have multiple sacrificial branches that are cut later on. However, the only drawback with doing this method, even though it grows the trunk very fast, is that it can leave large scars in the final design. However, it might be worth it if you can shave off several years of growth from doing it. So developing radial roots uh, is more of a technique to create a better nabari in your, your bone's eye. Um, and it does thicken up the base of the uh, trunk right around the nabari. The idea is basically when you repot um, you clean up the root structure so that every single root radiates out like a bicycle spoke and when you do that they spread evenly instead of uh, clumping together in certain spots to create a nice even Navari. In this method um, I'm just going to show you as a demo here I, obviously what you can do to get um, your nabari to kind of spread and grow horizontally versus down is, let's say you were to bury this little tiny maple right here, it's a vine maple. You know, you take it out of the pot, you bury this into the ground by, um, I don't know, four or five inches or whatever. And um, take the tree, you put it onto this, could be a slate. I have a piece of board here, but ideally probably like a tile or something. And then, put soil back over to the plant and just kind of plant it right on top of the tile. And what it does then is if roots can't go down, they will go laterally. So it causes the nabari to spread at, the, at that point. So that's another method. 
to uh, fatten up the trunk. When plants and trees grow in the wild, the wind constantly keeps them moving. This causes a stress in the wood load-bearing load structure of a tree. So to compensate, the tree manages to grow something called the reaction wood or stress wood. This stress wood usually has a different structure in terms of cellulose or lignin content and more, and is able to position the tree where it get the best light or other optimum resources. This is the reason why trees are able to contort towards the light and still survive loads and even awkward shapes. This is why some gardeners will actually brush their seedlings so that they don't become too leggy. That movement of the seedlings helps to reinforce and grow stronger trunks. So if you had to exercise your tree, you can do so. No, not like that, Ben. A little softer. Yes, softer. There you go, much better. So by exercising your tree, the tree will basically act like it's being blown by the wind and then grow stress wood and reinforce those areas and develop a thicker trunk in return. It might be worth it. So you could do this, I don't know, once every few days. Let's talk about scarring as a method of um, thickening up the trunk. So this is a large cut that was done on my Zelkova. And you can see how the growth, the scar, has created a very kind of bulbous, very undesirable uh, feature to the tree that I actually need to fix and carve out. However, if you did this and scarred the Nabari down here, let's say you made a big cut and then it scarred and healed over uh, and did it in a proper way, what would happen then is that bulbous growth or the scarring will add to the base of the, the Nabari and, and give you kind of um, a quick way of increasing the size of that trunk. So that's another way, it's, it's scarring. So some people will go in and either poke a million little holes around the nabari or actually just scrape off the bark. Um, and that will work most of the time. It depends on the species, mostly deciduous for the most part. But um, that's another way, it's scarring the trunk will create um, more growth and I guess bulbous scars around the uh, the area that you cut. You can kind of see the roots here. You know, it's kind of wild, rangy. Actually, this would be a good candidate for root over rock. I may do that. as well as do the, the wire binding on the roots. I don't want to break any roots right now, I just want to loosen it up so that I have room to play with. And all I'm going to do is just take this two millimeter wire and create a, a tourniquet around this big giant tap root so that I can restrict the flow um, on this tree. So I'm going to restrict the flow um, on this tree. I'm going to wrap this around twice, nice and tight. Hands probably blocking the view, and then um, twist it up. Okay, I got my pliers. Wrap it around here. Twist it as if I'm. Uh, tying in a tree to a pot. Good and tight. By doing this method, the area above the tourniquet will begin to swell and flare out. So it is a good idea to do this right around the nabari because that is the part where you want to be the widest. Here's a lesser known method of thickening the trunk. It is to use silica as a supplement. Silica actually alleviates stress in the plant and helps to lignify and fortify cell walls. You can look at the two plants here. One has silica, one was grown without it, and you can see the difference in size. Uh, all this was actually done in research by Professor Lawrence Statenoff. 
is the head of plant pathology and crop physiology at Louisiana State University. So before I even got into bonsai, about uh, three to four years ago, I, I got uh, Azalcova from Arbor Day. And um, it was one of those free trees that they give you if you bought like fruit trees and other things like that. And I didn't know what to do with, it, with the, uh, the tree, so I kept it in a one gallon pot just like this. Uh, I left it uh, basically next to my garden beds and for about three to four years uh, it grew. It started to grow and it started to root outside of the pot into the ground. I didn't realize that was happening and um, it became this in about uh, a little over three years. Um, so this is a nice big thick powerful trunk with a big namari here at the bottom. I didn't realize I was growing a uh, you know future bonsai when I was doing it. So um, it was pretty cool to see this. I did a lot of research, um, watch a lot of different things, talked to a lot of different people, um, including Dan Robinson. On Father's Day, I had a chance to visit Dan and he started onto a topic which I'm very kind of uh, passionate about, which is you know, how to grow bigger bonsai in a faster time. Um, and it's definitely not by growing bonsais in, in bonsai pots. So check out this clip of Dan um, talking about his process and his method of growing bonsais. Cool. So about 10 years ago, I was back in Kentucky, a guy gave me a handful of trident maples. So it's kind of like, a, it's a Japanese maple, but it's yep. a tree probably. Mm -hmm. And half of them I put in the ground and half of them I put in pots. And so now it's 10 years and I've got two of the ones that are in the pots. I've got a bunch more of them at home. Yeah. They all have trunks about this big. Yeah in 10 years in the pots. But the ones in the ground have trumps that big. And, uh, and uh, four of them I dug up two years ago, so mm -hmm. they've only had eight years in the ground. And of course I'm training both of them. The ones in the pots, the one in the ground, I'm training them to let them grow. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'll show you them. For, for the ones in pots to catch up with the ones that grow in the ground will be a hundred years. Right if it catches up then. You know, now that it, it's in a bonsai pot, yeah. of course it won't get much bigger, but they've got great trunks, so I'll show you that. Yeah, let's go. Because it's the, pre, it's the new wood that's added that makes trees have a thick trunk. Yeah. So this is a, a hard thing to get through uh, people's minds. So what's gonna add a trunk thickness here is this volume of wood in here this year cumulatively yeah so if you added all of that new wood together that's how much it is spread out over the trunk oh. so when you have growth like like this you get nothing yeah right so now here's one of them so I'm letting these things grow kind of free and this is two years growth but it's only added this much thickness, okay? Yeah. So in 10 years, that's what I've got, which isn't bad. Yeah. And this is what people all get because they put little trees in pots. Yeah. And they keep them pruned. And when you prune it, it stops it from getting bigger, thicker. Another one is back um, here. You can see it back there in the yeah. back pot. Great curves on that tree. Okay. Yeah. And you can see how much growth there is up there on that top. How old is this tree, Dan? Uh, 10 years. Wow. The pot. Yeah. You know, so hey, pretty nice, right? Yeah. I mean, here's the new top right here, you know? So it's all, you know, part of the plan. But this is what you get. Which again, from a bonsai standpoint. Oh, hey, fabulous, yeah, right? It looks great, yeah. But I'll show you what's fabulous. Okay. So I've got uh, four of these. Uh, one is at home and one is out there and two of them are here. But the best one is right around the corner here. So those have trunks this big, right? Yeah. Now these, this one only spent eight years in the ground. So for two years I've been training that as a bone size. This one? Hell yeah. Eight years in the ground and two years in the pot. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. 
So you can see, once it's in a bonsai pot, look at the size of the new wood that's added. It's nothing, right? Yeah. When you take that little bit of wood and that stem and spread it out over the trunk. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you don't get any gain. It stands still. Yeah. And so for those trees over there to catch up with this, once you start training them as a bonsai, they'll never catch up. Because this yeah. is going to get bigger anyhow. But what I what happened with these in the ground is they sent suckers out that were this big. Hmm. See, instead of this big. Yep. Or like over there, that big. And there were multiple ones. Yeah. Coming off the trunk. And so each year I'd let them grow free. Yeah. And they'd hide the bone size out there. I mean, this is out of the, the <laughs> one. It hid the tree behind it, you know. But I just. And then in the winter I'd cut them off. Yep. And then kind of train a little bit. Let it do the same thing the next year. Yeah. And so you can see there's some hollows in here. See where you can see through the trunk in there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can see right so, through it. So these were big, big uh, scars on here. From, Did you carve those? Yeah. Okay. Of course. So these were all scars uh, from the uh, from the suckers. And then I hollow them out. Yeah. So they become value added. Yeah. I mean, I love a hollow trunk, right? I mean, I, it doesn't have to be any other thing. But so that's the deal. And gives it a lot of character. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. And so, anyhow, take your trees, take them out of the pots, and put them in the ground. I, I totally agree. Uh, I'll show totally you a pine agree. over here that's, um, it was, it's, it was 10 years in the ground ago. Yeah. I just dug it up this spring. Uh, three of them, they're growing out here. You saw some trees in the ground. I do. Out of here, some uh, pine. Yeah. So this was one of them. This guy right here. And so this is 10 years from seed. Wow. 10 years and it's gotten that big. Yeah. It's amazing. You can see this? That was the shoot that I let grow. Yeah. So it got eight feet tall. Yeah. And it's sending out candles, these things, that are this big. Right. Adding trunk size. Absolutely. And then I cut it off and then I carve it. Another 10 year old, this guy here. Yeah, oh, look at that. Look at yeah. that Nabari. Yeah. From seed. That is amazing. Yeah. Ten years. But like I said, everybody else. Um, I'm sorry. They put them in bonsai pots. Yeah. Then your candles are, are like this. Well, that's pretty good. But you can see how much wood it's going to add. It's just that little bit. Compared to that shoot on there. Or oh, yeah. This one, this one had, well, there. See? That was my leader. Yep. So I kept the bottom branches wired because I knew that's where my tree was and this was just for growth thickening. Yeah, that's awesome. And I wish everybody did that. Thank you for so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Take care of yourself. Until the next time. Bye-bye.